Welcome back to Reptiles and Research. So, do ball pythons need a UVB light? Before we go into UV, we need to assess the whole thing around ball pythons and just light in general. So the prevailing myth is that ball pythons are terrified of lights. They're stressed when lights are upon them. They're going to shrivel up and die. Maybe not that far. But is it normal for a nocturnal animal to have lights? Or should we not do that? To answer that question, we need to understand what light actually does for them. So with us animals that are active in the day, like us humans, melatonin is a hormone that makes us sleepy. So when light hits our retina, it stops the production of melatonin and it wakes us up. And then we go about our day and we do our things during the day. But as soon as daylight levels drop and it gets dark and there's no light hitting our retina, then the production of melatonin comes in and then we get sleepy. And in the morning when sunlight hits our eyes, then we wake up because it cuts off that production. Well, in nocturnal animals, it's the reverse. Melatonin doesn't make them sleepy. Melatonin makes them energized. So when there's light abundant melatonin is cut off in the exact, exact same way but because it's cut off and it gives them energy then they get sleepy during the day or just in general less active but as soon as light levels drop melatonin production kicks in again and the energy comes on so they're using, we're using the exact same script we're just flipping the script so a nocturnal animal actually does need light to go through the whole cycle to even act in a nocturnal way otherwise it's really, really alien and not that great for them. That just means there's a ball python just sat in the dark. They don't know if it's light or day. That's not acting nocturnal. That's just sat in the dark. Could you imagine if we looked at us and we're like, okay, we're daylight active. Therefore, they never get nighttime. So you have all these bright lights beaming on you 24 seven. That's not going to be great for your sleep. That's not going to be great for your hormonal cycle. And long term, not that great for your health. And it's the same for the ball pythons. So ball pythons really should, at a very minimum, have access to light during the day and dark during the night. And it'll get them to act appropriately. The narrative of like, oh, light stress them is either from people that want to push a narrative of they belong in a, in a tub, in a rack, in the dark to justify like hoarding snakes in poor conditions, or it's because they've had these animals in these poor conditions, it's experienced nothing but darkness and then they put lights on it and the animal has like a, a shock because its entire life's changed all at once and it, it's, it's just too much at once and then they go look at that and they go doesn't like light that means all ball pythons shouldn't have light it's not true they need a day night cycle so i hope that assures you that the just light in general isn't going to stress out your ball python so let's get on to uv before we go into what it even does to the body we need to look at what it even does to the surface of their skin. When the UVB hits the surface of their skin, it kills bacteria, it kills viruses, and it kills fungi. So it has a sterilization effect upon the surface of the skin. Yes, it's not like medical grade sterilization, but it's doing a role and it does something to the skin, even at that surface level. And whilst we're still in the skin, UVB even plays a role in their immune system. The UVB actually stimulates white blood cells, lymphocytes, and melanocytes. Without getting fancy, basically it's giving them a better immune system, it's better equipped to deal with issues that may arise. And we're still in the skin, skin cells actually secrete beta endorphins, which gives you that feel good factor when you're in the sun and it feels good in your skin. That's happening in a reptile skin as well. So anything else going forward, you can look at a bull python basking and be like, it's getting that feel good factor. So it just feels good. It just feels good for them. Now, I'm not going to go hardcore into the science of the whole D3 cycle and everything because I've got a whole dedicated video about the science on that and what happens to a snake under UV. But what I will say is basically the production of vitamin D3 happens. Now, we all know that everyone says that bull pythons get enough vitamin D from the rats and the mice that they eat, so they don't actually need it from UV. But it's a little bit more complicated than that. So we have to look at other snakes for a second here. So when we look at other species, there was a paper published in the American Veterinary Medical Association and they looked at corn snakes and they wanted to see if these corn snakes would have increased levels of vitamin D compared to a group 
that they didn't give UVB to. So if their vitamin D levels rose in the snakes with UV, it would show that they're using it for that purpose. They had 12 snakes in total, 6 had UV and 6 did not. Bloods were withdrawn and measured at the start of the period and at the end of the 28 day period. And what they found was that the snakes that had UVB, their vitamin D levels in their blood rose by 211%. Crazy levels. There was another paper that did the exact same thing with Burmese pythons. And the Burmese pythons that were given UV had their vitamin D levels rise by 525%. That is a crazy amount. So this is where it gets really interesting, right? So when reptiles produce vitamin D through their skin from UVB, they have a self-limiting process. Basically, if they produce too much, they would overdose and it, get, it would get to toxic levels. So what they have is a self-limiting process so that once they get to a certain amount, they stop making vitamin D from there and everything gets converted into the inert things and other metabolites to be used elsewhere in the body. So basically, they have this braking system that if they get too high, they pull the brakes and they stop producing. So my point is, is if our snakes are at top tip levels because all they need is it from the diet and there's a top level where it breaks and stops if you're near the top because you've already got the amazing levels that you've got from your diet because that's all, all snakes need right so how can you gain 500 percent? how can you gain five times the amount you have either the levels were there to begin with and they would have capped off and that wouldn't have happened or the vitamin d levels are actually really low so this narrative that we've got of that all snakes don't need UVB because actually they get everything they need from their diet, suddenly that doesn't really work. So obviously they've got enough vitamin D to like absorb calcium and go through the whole like cycle of using calcium at a very bare bones level. But all this extra stuff that is for health, that's for the skin, that's for the immune system, that does all of these things isn't happening because we've got the bare bones level that we're using just for staying alive. So if, you, if you're like me, the first time I read all this and I dove into this, I was like, what is going on? Like this is the complete opposite of what everyone thinks. And everyone just doesn't know. So let's bring this back to the bull pythons for a second. There was a study, they did the exact same thing on bull pythons, but it went a little bit wrong. Let's look into that. So they took a group of 14 bull pythons, nothing wrong there, very normal for a study of this type. But what they did went a little bit wrong. So in the test group of animals they actually gave UV, it was all females. It was six females to be exact. And then the group that they didn't give UV to, there was five males and three females. And they did the exact same thing. They took levels at the start and at the end of a period. And what happened was these females levels didn't really change much at all. And what came out of that was that actually these animals were gravid bull pythons. So the, the explanation from the authors and other authors of other papers that have talked about this paper is that these bull pythons are actually in a process of putting all their vitamin D into the eggs. Because obviously eggs are high in vitamin D, right? And the embryo needs that. So if you're trying to read blood levels of a bull python that's sending all their vitamin D out of their blood and into the eggs inside them, that could be a possible explanation as to why that didn't change much. The kick in the teeth for me is that if there was just some males in the group they gave UV to, and it showed that the females didn't change and the males actually like blew up like every other species, it would probably be even more concrete that this is probably the egg problem. But because there was no males in the actual test group, we can't really say that, we don't know. What could have happened actually, if there was males in that test group and they didn't change, we'd be like, Hmm, maybe bull pythons don't use UV for the same process as other species. But because they didn't do that, we don't really know. Now, it's entirely possible that bull pythons actually do get really high levels and they're really good at extracting high amounts from their diet and they actually don't do anything with UV at all in terms of the vitamin D3 cycle. But we don't know that. So it's entirely plausible, but probably not probable. If we look at another paper, bull pythons actually have cones in their eyes that allow them to see to the ultraviolet spectrum. 
And what this means is they see the world in a completely different way. Not only are they seeing infrared via the heat pits, but via their eyes they're seeing into the ultraviolet spectrum. It's not really clear what this is for. Some authors hypothesize that it's for seeing the reflective state of rodent urine. Some birds of prey have the same ability where they can see into the ultraviolet spectrum. So they're flying up high and they look down and they see like illuminous, like highlighted rodent urine and they know where to target because it's reflecting UV. It's almost like a video game. If you imagine like you're going to select an item and this item is like highlighted and it's lit up and the environment's not. That's how I kind of imagine it. So these snakes possibly can actually see things like that. They can see a lit up trail to where like rodents might be, which I think is just incredible. And then it might be used for like following these trails and sitting in a certain spot and waiting for that rodent to use the same trail for them to ambush and get their prey. And the same thing was found with boa constrictors. But the point of that story is, is that without UV present in their environment, bull pythons can't actually see properly. It would be like keeping someone intentionally colorblind, but there was a light that could allow them to see. It's very interesting that. There was another study where they put bull pythons from racks into a 4x2x2 enclosure with a whole lighting, shindig and everything. And they found that by filming these snakes for a prolonged period, that the bull pythons were basking for two and a half hours a day. The authors also noted if they took the UV away from the basking spot, the snakes basked significantly less. So the UV at the basking spot is something that's motivating these snakes to come out and bask for longer. And in this same study they used albino bull pythons as well and these snakes would bask around 10 minutes per day. So they're not using it as much but they are using it. So it's not like they're scared and completely avoiding it forever like a frightened little child. They're using it. So if they can see into UV and they need it to see properly and they're basking for longer at basking spots when it's present and they're basking for two and a half hours a day, what are they using UV for? Because if these blood works are correct and it isn't a mess up, which I think it is, then what are they using UV for? Or did we just botch that study and actually need more work needs to be done and actually have males in the test group and actually see f for certain? Because if Burmese pythons that are so similarly related of the same genus as bull pythons do do it and you can actually hybridize a bull python with a Burmese python to make a berm ball so they're closely related enough to actually hybridize like that you would think that also they're closely related enough that their ability to use the sun is very very similar or exactly the same. So if I were to place my bets I would say this study probably botched it and they probably do use it but we need more studies to be absolutely certain to have that concrete receipt. But if they actually don't go through the whole vitamin D cycle like that are they just doing it because it feels nice? Are they doing it because it just looks nice and they like to see? Is it doing hormonal things to them in terms of like the day-night cycle? We don't know. All we know is that when we give it to bull pythons, they want to use it. If they're not traumatized from racks, but that's a whole different story. <laughs> Do bull pythons need UVB? Well, I think that comes down to, to which sort of lens are looking at the word need that you operate from. If you're looking at it from a case of, are the hearts going to stop? beating if they don't have it are they going to die without it then you would say no they don't need it because they can live and survive without it but if you operate from the same sort of level as the way that i would say like a dog needs a walk every day or a dog at least needs access to walks that dog's not going to die without walks but most of us would be like yeah a dog needs a walk that's a bare basic thing so when i say it needs it that's the op that's sort of the vibe i'm going with we know that they, they'll survive and like have babies and breed in a tiny little tray without any lights whatsoever. The same way that a puppy meal would shove a dog into a crate and breed it. That dog's not going for walks, but we all say a dog needs walks. So I, I personally say bull pythons need UV. If we want to give them the best life possible, if we want to be the best version of ourselves and the best keepers possible and the best owners possible, they need UV. Let's say we do research in the future, which I am. Heads up, I'm doing some stuff, doing some bits and bobs. If we give them UV, and you've already got UV, and I come out later down the line and be like, hey guys, actually, no, I, I repeated that study and... Uh, the bloods, I've got the exact same bloods. You've had UV on that animal for the entire time and you've gone, oh, okay, so I provide something and I've not really withheld something from my animal. I feel good about that. And for some reason, whatever reason that is, the animal likes to use it and likes to sit under it. Okay, cool. I still provide it because it makes, 
It just it's a good thing in my bull python's day. Whereas the reverse, if I come out and I'm like, yeah, the blood's changed, that was a botch study, we should probably give the UV. You're like, oh, I've, I've just withheld this like really important thing from my snake. I feel terrible. I would say just give them UV and then you just feel good regardless. If you like videos about this and you like the guides, there's plenty more bull python guides on the channel and there's plenty more coming. So if you want to see more of that, subscribe to this channel and I'll see you in the next video.